Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video we're going to be covering hypothesis testing for the final review of the 150.5 exam. So here we have problem 7 and if you look on the right hand side you see we have our table for how to indicate the, the type of null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis from a claim. So let's first begin with the program or with the problem and then we'll get to this. So, a researcher claims that the mean annual cost of raising a child aged two and under by husband and wife families in the U.S. is $13,960. In a random sample of husband and wife families in the U.S., the mean annual cost of raising a child aged two and under is $13,725. The sample consists of 500 children, so assume the population standard deviation is $2,345 and use the 0 0.10 level of significance and we're using this 0 0.10 level of significance to test the claim of course. Now this is for the standard deviation, the word is missing here but the word deviation should be here because this represents the standard deviation. Alright, so now what do we know about this and what do we have to identify before we do anything in any hypothesis test? The first thing we want to do is identify the claim and the claim here is a researcher's claim uh, a researcher claims that the mean annual cost of raising a child aged two and under by husband and wife families in the U.S. is $13,960. So here's our claim. So we have here a claim. And the claim is that the mean is equivalent to $13,960. So there we have our claim. Now, the seven step process for doing a hypothesis test, this is step one, identify your claim. Once you identify your claim, you can use a table like this one I've provided for you to adjust your no hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. So right here, I'm going to just put H0, some, a colon there, and then HA, put a colon here. So step two and three would be identify your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. Based on our claim, we see the mean is equivalent to 13,960. We go to our chart here, we have six different symbols and we see we have the equality symbol. So because it's equality, we match it up to the null hypothesis. So this claim here becomes our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis says the mean is 13,960. The alternative, once we see this is the null, the alternative is right next to it. They're always paired off by twos. And the alternative becomes the mean is not equivalent to 13,960. So there's steps two and three. A few more steps to go. So now we have these two steps and the next step we want to identify with is the type of test we're dealing with. And based on this we see right next to the two equality symbols that we're using for the, hypo the no hypothesis and alternative, we have a two-tailed test. That's the type of the test. That's step four here. So we have a two-tailed test And now that we know the type of test we have, let's draw our region so that we can define the critical regions in this problem. So here we have a two-tailed test. So we know this is a bad position to draw our little chart in. Let me move it up over here. So here we know that our chart is going to be based on this, this information. So here to define our critical region, we have to first draw the diagram put the two tails in because we know it's a two tail test and we have to identify with our our regions here so what do we need to do this what we need is the significance level and the significance level is right down here our significance level is 0 0.10 so our alpha then becomes 0 0.10 and to get the critical region we have to take the area of the tail and divide it by 2 so alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.10 divided by 2 which is 0 0.05. So the area in each tail on this chart has a region value of 0 0.05. So there's 0 0.05 here, there's 0 0.05 here, and there's 0 0.90 in the middle. All right. Now if we know anything about confidence intervals, we know the critical value for a confidence level of 90% is 1.645. So this is negative 1.645, this is positive 1.645. If, if anyone watching this video is wondering how I know that, if you go to your z-score charts, look in the bottom right 
of your page on the positive z-score chart, you're going to notice in the bottom right corner there's going to say uh, confidence level and critical values. Now if you look under there, you're going to see the number 0.90 and next to it for the, the critical value of 0.90's confidence level value, you're going to see the number 1.645. Now this is an absolute critical value for the confidence interval numbers and the interval runs from the negative to the positive z-score. So we take that critical value and we put one positive here, one negative here for the left side since this is a two-tailed test. So this helps us identify step four which is drawing the diagram and identifying with our critical z-value. So here we'll make a note of that and we'll say our z-critical is equivalent to plus and minus 1.645. So let's make a couple of conditions here so we can understand how this critical region uh, works. So we'll say if our z-test statistic is greater than 1.645, if the absolute value of our z-test statistic is greater, then we will reject our no hypothesis. However, if our, the absolute value of our z test stat is less than 1.645, we will fail to reject the no hypothesis. In other words, if our z score lands below negative 1.645, we're going to reject the no hypothesis. If it lands above this 1.645, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls within these two, we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis, all right? These are the conditions for our hypothesis test here. So let's get on to the last steps then. What we need to do now is calculate our test statistic and then calculate our p-value based on it, all right? One way to do this is just to compare our test statistic to our critical statistics, I mean our critical z-score values. And once we do that, if our criticals uh, make us reject or accept our null hypothesis, it will be based on just the z-score. But if we want to go a little bit further and be a little bit uh, more conclusive with this, we'll, com we'll compute the p-value, right? So let me just grab my calculator and we can get to this, right? So. Now let's put together all our information so that we can get everything right. So now we have to make our z-test statistic and our z-test statistic is going to be the sample mean. So we have to calculate now everything we have from our information. So we know the average here is this from the claim. So our mean x bar is going to be 13,960 and that's this value right here. We also know that there's a sample of 500 children. This is the sample, so this is our n. Our n is going to be 500. We also have an x bar and this is because it's a sample mean, right? The mean annual cost of raising a child age two and under is 13,725, and this comes from the random sample of husband, wife, families. So this is our X bar, 13,725. Besides these values, they also give us the standard deviation of the population, and since we're assuming the population standard deviation is 2,345, we know this is sigma, because when sigma is known, it's a population standard deviation, right? And if sigma came from a sample, in other words, if your standard deviation comes directly from the sample, this would be a t-score problem, not a z-score problem, right? So here we're using sigma because we're using the z-score table to do this problem. And here we have the sigma is 2,345. So now we know that the test statistic is going to be a z-test as well as the critical region B and z based on all of this because our population standard deviation is known and not unknown, right? So now let's compute our test statistic. And to compute this test statistic, we're going to use the formula x bar minus the mean of the x bar divided by sigma over the square root of n. All right? 
And for those of you who are doing this, make sure that you do have a calculator because it's going to be very important that you calculate this with one. All right? And just for the sake of it, I'm going to grab one myself so I can do this. All right. So our first set of values here are going to be the x bar, which we have is 13,725. So we're going to have here 13,725 minus 13,960. And this is being divided by the standard deviation in parentheses, 2345, divided by the square root of 500. All right? So now when we calculate the top, we have 13,725 minus 13,960. That's going to give us negative 235. So use parentheses. So the correct way to input this on your calculator is just going to be negative 235 divided by parenthesis 2345 divided by the square root of 500. When you press enter, you should get the solution for this. So negative 235 divided by 2345 divided by the square root of 500. Make sure that's in parentheses is the denominator. Press enter and we get our z-score. Make sure you write out the four, the three digits. So negative two point two four the eight rounds the third position to one so this just becomes negative two point twenty four and this is our z test stat now based on our test statistic we see that negative two point twenty four falls below the negative z score right so negative two point twenty four is over here and based on this marker we know we have to fail we have to reject the null hypothesis right our condition says if the z-test that the absolute value is less than 1.645, we fail to reject. However, if the absolute value of the z-test that is greater than 1.645, the absolute value of this is 2.24, which is greater, we must reject the null hypothesis. All right? But let's calculate this also using the p-value test, right? So because it's a two-tailed test, we have to double the p-value. So the p-value would equal two times the probability of the z-score of negative 2.24. So what we have to do then is use our z-score chart. And our z-score chart for this z-score, we have the p-value equals two times 0 0.0125. And this becomes 0 0.0250. So here's our p-value. And to accept the null hypothesis, our p-value must be greater than our significance level. In this case, our p-value is not greater than our significance level, so we must, we must reject the null hypothesis. Thank you.